know. My voice sounds fantastic. A little less while you might keep these people from being crazy with me. Okay. You guys can probably hear me already now, huh? Okay, good. We'll just uh, keep it nice and low. Uh, my name is Andy, as I uh, introduced myself in there earlier. We're going to go ahead and start you guys off with the history of Zappos, so that when we get to there, we can just kind of show you everything and, uh, and begin you guys off with the wow. So has anybody here actually read Delivering Happiness yet? Ah, good handful of people. All right. Uh, well, uh, the good thing is uh, we actually give every guest that tours a free copy of Delivering Happiness. Uh, so on the way out, you guys will notice uh, after the tour, you're going to have a table where you can pick up Delivering Happiness, as well as the 2010 Culture Book. Uh, every year, Tony actually emails all of the employees and asks us for a sentence, a paragraph, or an essay on what the Zappos culture actually means to us. So uh, we actually get to put that into a book. Uh, they don't filter it in any way, and uh, we're able to publish it and give it out to you guys. So you guys are going to get two free books before you leave. So you have a history of Zappos and uh, kind of the ongoing culture as well. So uh, the whole story, of course, starts uh, back in 1998. A gentleman named Nick Swimner was actually shopping in San Francisco. He was uh, wandering through the mall, and he was looking for an air a pair of Airwalk Desert Chucka boots. Uh, nothing too fancy. You know, he wasn't looking for anything bedazzled or anything uh, airbrush painted like they do nowadays. Uh, it was just a simple pair of boots, but he could not find them in his size and color. Uh, so, of course, instead of just whining and complaining about it, he went home and checked on the websites. Uh, it was the dot-com era back then, so he decided to check around, and he noticed that on places like Nordstrom's and Macy's that had pretty good shoe industries, uh, there wasn't any different selection or, uh, or quantity on the websites compared to what he found in the stores. Uh, so he really started brainstorming. Uh, he thought up an idea for shoesite.com. Uh, it was a little PowerPoint presentation he put together, and with the help of his friends and family, and uh, even his chiropractor, uh, he actually developed $150,000 and put it all together and started this company, uh, or started the idea. Really quickly learned that $150,000 will really just buy you the idea, nothing else. Uh, so he started, of course, uh, looking around for companies that had money, uh, venture capital firms, and that's where he ran into uh, a gentleman you guys may have heard of, Tony Shea. A uh, little backstory on Tony, uh, get those past kind of put together. When he was at university, he actually uh, retrofitted some pizza ovens and was actually selling pizzas to the college students right out of his dorm room. Uh, so very good supply and demand, of course. Uh, but he had a gentleman that would come, die, come by, that's all right, every single day uh, and buy a large pizza. Uh, he wasn't a really big guy, and uh, after a while he started coming in buying two and three pizzas in a day. He's like, all right, kid, you're my best customer. I, I get it but what are you doing with all the pizza? you got to be doing something with it. And he said, actually, it's really simple. I want there to be pizza in the study groups upstairs, and so I buy the pizza from you, take it upstairs, and the students end up buying it by the slice. Uh, so without even trying, uh, he was actually making more money per hour than Tony was. Uh, so they actually decided that they were uh, probably a pretty good match of friends, and uh, for the first 11 years of our company, that gentleman was Alfred Lynn, our uh, CFO of, of the company. Uh, so a good way for those two to meet. Uh, after they got started, uh, of course, Tony and his roommate had started a company called Link Exchange, uh, network and banner ad exchanges, just like is very, very common nowadays to network promote uh, sites versus other sites. But back then, the idea of selling magazine space on a website was relatively new, so they were able to innovate. Uh, it started out as 10 friends in an apartment just hanging out, having fun, and in less than a year, it had become a full-fledged company, making a lot of money and being very productive, but the fun was completely gone. Uh, Tony owned his own company and came in every single day after hitting the snooze button four and five times and dreading actually getting up and coming into his company. So he knew that something had to change. Uh, so with the help of Alfred Lynn, uh, they actually talked to a company by the name of Microsoft that had expressed some interest in buying Link Exchange. Uh, they worked out a little bit of deal and in their early 20s they actually sold Link Exchange to Microsoft for $265 million. Uh, worked out very, very well for them. Nice little uh, early 20s venture. Wish we all had that. <laughs> Uh, so afterwards, of course, they had that money and they decided to start up Venture Frogs. That was a business incubator and a venture company, capital company, uh, that actually would give companies the money to get started and then give them the room to grow and figure out where their company wanted to be. Just like he had seen Link Exchange wasn't what he wanted it to be. He wanted to help people understand that, that growth. Uh, so they, of course, were in San Francisco, so the big dot-coms was uh, what they were mostly uh, investing in. And that's where the paths really cross. Uh, Nick had an idea, needed money. Tony had money and needed ideas. Uh, so they, uh, of course, had a voicemail uh, that Nick left on Tony's machine, and he was very, very excited about his idea. I'm going to start a website where if there's a particular shoe in a particular size or a color or a style, if there's out, there is one out there, I will find it for you. I wanted to call it Shoe Site. 
So they thought that was probably a pretty good idea. Uh, and so they actually decided, uh, hey, let's give him a call. Uh, and they actually realized that he knew nothing about the shoe industry. And he didn't have anybody in the shoe industry that knew anything. So they told him, sorry kid, we're not going to do this with you. Um, but then they really started to realize that the company, uh, in 1998, the shoe industry was worth $40 billion. Uh, 5% or, or, I'm sorry, 2% or $5 billion was done via catalog sales. So uh, people buying things sight unseen, and that's exactly what you could do on a website. So they told him, you know what, if you can find someone that knows about the industry, we're willing to take that jump with you. So Nick had a new, a new goal, a new passion. Start calling people, start seeing who's willing to jump. Uh, he actually, of course, called companies like Nordstrom's and Macy's, again, well-known shoe retailers, uh, and he actually propo uh, posed as a buyer for much larger companies and uh, got some of their buyers on the phone, and then he was much more honest uh, and simply let them know about his idea. Uh, most of them, of course, did not think it was all that great and kind of told him, this was so genius, somebody would already be doing it, kid. Sorry. Uh, so, But he was actually able to get a gentleman on the line named Fred Mosler, who just heard him asking for ideas, for information. He said, this kid isn't asking me to change my career, he's just asking for help. So we went and had lunch with him. Uh, they exchanged a lot of ideas, kind of talked about how it could grow and how it might be able to work. Uh, but at the end of it, it was just that, a series of conversations. Uh, so they, of course, went ahead and parted ways. Six weeks later, Fred called up Nick and asked him, have you found anybody willing to jump with you yet? Uh, he kind of knew that the answer from Nick was going to be, no, it uh, it's really is a hard sell, but I'm not giving up. So uh, Fred really thought about it and realized that this kid wasn't giving up. And he already had a company that was willing to back him on the idea. That's usually the biggest part of the challenge. Uh, so he decided that he was going to be that crazy person to jump. Uh, he was going to, of course, leave everything behind that he had developed at Nordstrom's. Uh, he actually became the very first employee of ShoeSite.com and uh, technically the only person who knew anything about shoes at a company called ShoeSite. So it uh, worked out very, very well for Mr. Mosler. Uh, Fred is still with the company 11 years later. Uh, we, of course, are here because of him. Uh, without him, it probably would have been an idea that would have gone in that nice little PowerPoint binder and sat in Nick's mom's garage for 20 years. So we're very, very glad he came out. Uh, if you ever get the uh, privilege of getting one of Fred's cards, it will say Fred Mosler, no title. Uh, he really does a lot of things here at Zappos, so he really does not want to limit himself. So we do have Tony Shea, our CEO. Uh, we now have Chris Nielsen, our CFO, after the Amazon buyout. Uh, and then, of course, Fred Mosler, just no title. So it works out very, very well for him. Uh, so once everybody was together, they decided to take a big picture look at the idea. ShoeSite.com was an awesome idea for selling shoes. But with a platform of selection, anything and everything, what if you wanted to sell more than shoes in the future? Well, you put yourself into a box. In this case, yes, it is a shoe box. I know, folks, I'm clever. I'll be here all day. Um, yes, uh, in that shoe box, they decided that they wanted to expand because maybe one day they wanted to do more than shoes. And uh, they actually thought up some words. Nick thought up the Spanish word for shoes, zapatos. Uh, they decided to chop it down to zappos.com. Uh, and of course, it was nice and catchy and short. Uh, but people started calling it Zappos, so they decided to add a second P. So uh, Zap into Zappos, and of course uh, Zappos was born. Uh, there is no description for that word or definition. Uh, it is our brand, is our service. We're able to sell anything and everything, with customer service being the absolute forefront. So it worked out very, very well for us. We got ourselves started in a tiny apartment in San Francisco on uh, 9th and Judah, a delicious donut shop nearby. Uh, and uh, we actually got everything set, and we were actually doing drop shipping. So customers would contact us, ask us for a particular shoe, we would search, we would find it through the manufacturers, and we would have it shipped to them. But we wouldn't know how long it would take. Uh, we wouldn't be able to tell them, I shipped the package, I have tracking numbers for you. So we decided we needed to make that experience a little bit better. Uh, we decided to actually take our warehouse, uh, our stock in-house, and actually ship it out ourselves. Uh, by doing that, of course, we had to leave that tiny little apartment, uh, and we actually took over the old Cadillac dealership on Van Ness Street in San Francisco. A uh, little side note about that apartment, until just recently, the uh, man that moved in actually housed him and his list out of that office. Uh, his name was Craig. Uh, so we're very excited to kind of have that little one. Uh, it sure was, until just recently. They did move out just recently. Uh, but some good mojo in that office, so uh, next time I have an idea, I'm going to go looking for that lease space. Uh, so after, of course, we moved into San Francisco, we uh, had everything in-house, and we were shipping to everybody on the West Coast within four to five business days. But the people on the East Coast were kind of stuck with much longer shipping times. Uh, when we looked at logistics, we realized that anytime you ship something across the country, it first has to stop in Louisville, Kentucky. It has to stop at UPS's World Port Hub and then get sorted on. So we decided to uh, kind of take out the middleman. 
We decided to cozy right up next to UPS uh, in Shepherdsville, Kentucky. So now when we ship things to their hub, it's a 20 minute drive right down the highway. So they pick up from us 18 times a day, Monday through Friday, 12 times a day on Sunday. So it works out very, very nicely for our customers. Uh, so that worked out very well. Uh, we were actually able to ship from East Coast to West Coast, four to five business days, no matter where you were. It was awesome. Uh, but then we started looking at the customer's experience. The customers were calling us uh, 24 hours a day is awesome, but when your agents are not able to make a good living because they're in the Bay Area as opposed to another place where taxes, of, taxes and cost of living are lower, they're not as excited about that job. Uh, also, when they get off work in the evening time, there's no transit, there's no entertainment, there's no stores open. They're going to stop for a life. Uh, so we actually started looking around and trying to find what the best spot for us would be. Uh, we looked around, found of course some really amazing towns across this great nation, uh, but Las Vegas came up as the number one spot for us. As you guys have seen, it's a pretty fun town. There's always something going on as uh, you guys just came from the Cosmo. Uh, it's of course, taxes and cost of living are much lower here, so agents can actually make a full living doing their work in a call center. And people who live in Las Vegas enjoy that customer interaction. They want to be able to make people happy and they want to be able to talk to people on a regular basis. So they actually really enjoyed what we were doing. We didn't have our core values established just yet, so we knew that fun wanted to be a big part of that. And uh, where else can you get fun 24 hours a day than Las Vegas? So we came out here in 2004. We picked up and made the move. Uh, we had 97 employees with us in San Francisco. Over 70 of them made the move with us to here in Las Vegas. Here, we actually still have 30 of those employees working with us today. So, nice little family that we have. Uh, we've grown incredibly in the last couple of years. Uh, we had it over a thousand employees last year, uh, or in the last year and a half or so. So, you will notice there's a lot of people that are new within the company as well. We're definitely expanding, definitely growing. We're hoping to make them all homegrown leaders here at the Zappos family. Uh, so, of course, at the end of 2009, we were purchased by Amazon. Uh, they paid a whole lot of money to do pretty much nothing. Uh, they back us up on absolutely everything that we do, and they have not changed our culture. Uh, they really wanted to make sure that nobody else was able to change our culture as well. So they stepped in, and they are our parents uh, in this amazing little Zappos family. And it's very exciting because now they just come along to our parties. Uh, and they are definitely our good party goers. Uh, so when you come out, uh, you guys are actually going to be visiting one of our three buildings here at Corporate Circle. Uh, the other two buildings are uh, some of our training offices. Of course, when kids are uh, new into the training, we do have uh, a lot of fun going through their brains. So adding a parade to the, to the mix may be a little much for them. Uh, we also have some of our email uh, finance and development teams. They're writing codes and uh, having incredible and epic nerf wars over there. Uh, so we do let them uh, not participate in the tours, but we do have a huge building that you are going through that houses uh, merchandising, uh, some of our marketing and retail systems, our customer loyalty teams, uh, and then of course various training groups and everything else like that. So you're just going to be able to see a lot of incredible people. Uh, feel free to take pictures or videos. There's one whiteboard that shows financial data uh, that we aren't able to take pictures of, publicly traded company and all that. Uh, so other than that, feel free. Uh, we'll be able to answer questions and things like that. I believe Rob was out here with you guys yesterday, and uh, we're going to have some people coming out after the tour as well to uh, kind of talk with you guys and go over any extra questions you guys have. All right. Uh, when you're visiting here, of course, in Las Vegas, we have 1,100 employees, 2,500 employees out in Shepherdsville, Kentucky. So they are a huge part of our family, sadly separated. Uh, they do have a lot of culture out there as well. Uh, they don't have the hanging streamers and some of the awesome chaos that you guys will see that we have because of course they're a, a federal trade zone and we have to make sure that with machinery we don't have dangling streamer bits all the time. Uh, but they do have an awesome little karaoke room and a whole lot of other fun stuff. So if you guys are ever out in Kentucky, they do offer tours. That's actually kytours at zappos.com. So we uh, definitely are welcoming people into what we do. Uh, the company that John and I work for is actually Zappos Insights. We're another entity in the Zappos family. Uh, we offer, of course, tours and live events. Uh, in addition to this, if you or your company and your management ever want to come out and visit with us, we actually do bits of corporate development. Uh, we do half-day events, a silver day, where we actually have you meet with three departments of your choice, kind of ask any questions and learn the things that you really want to learn. Our gold event is a full, full day. We've got a curriculum scheduled with all of our different departments and you can pretty much learn anything and everything we've got to give you. Uh, and then of course two day events, our gold and our boot camp. Uh, boot camp is a full culture immersion. We set you down, do all the things we do during a gold, 
Uh, we implement some games. We kind of show you how we do the things that we do, how we kind of implement those core values and make them actionable. And then we actually have you sit on the phones with our agents, talk with our different agents, and really understand what it is to wow our customers so you can actually see it firsthand. Sometimes just hearing about it is one thing, but as you guys will learn uh, after this tour, being able to see it in action is a whole other thing. So uh, anybody have any, uh, any quick questions? I think we've got uh, about two minutes before we head out there.